going on YouTube? Sorry it's been a minute since I posted any uh, content, but uh, I've been busy. So let's uh, let's roll some time lapse footage so that you can see uh, what I've been doing.
All right, guys, now that you've gotten the flavor of what it took to build the booth, let's talk about some of the details. So the sizing of the booth is 10 feet side to side. It is 16 feet front to back, and it is 82 inches tall simply because of my garage door, my garage door opening. Uh, costs. So if you didn't have any of the materials to start this project worth a project off with, you're probably looking at a little over $400, probably four to 450. So to me, this pricing or this booth cost me $150. And the reason for it is the majority of the lumber, like 95% of it was free to me. So I've collected this lumber over the uh, number of years from various sources that were just giving it away. And I just collected it knowing I would need it for projects like this. Now, it's not quality lumber. A lot of it's gnarly and warped and <laughs> twisted, but it did, it does the job. So what, uh, what it cost me was two boards and they were two by four by 10 feet in length. They were nine bucks. So if you were to buy the lumber to build this exact booth, uh, it would run you a little over $200. Now I didn't have to spend that. I spent $18, but whatever. Um, plastic sheeting. So this is six mil plastic. Uh, it's 10 feet by 25 feet each roll. I bought three rolls. I used two and a half. Um, I wouldn't recommend anything less than six mil plastic if you're building a booth with wood framing, simply because of all the jagged corners and stuff. You don't want things ripping. You want it to stay, stay put and don't, uh, don't rip. Um, I have seen people build PVC uh, piping as their booths. Uh, I've done it for when I did powder coating. Uh, it's actually pretty easy. And right now PVC uh, piping is cheaper than lumber. So that's a good tip for you guys that are actually gonna do this if you don't have lumber to begin with. Uh, save yourself a coin and do it, go that route. Uh, plus it's round, it's no jagged corners. You can get away with uh, three mil plastic in that, in that route, right? Uh, PVC piping is also very easy to assemble and disassemble. You don't need to glue it together. You can just use uh, friction to hold it in place and go that route. Uh, additional costs, filters. You know, I've got two filters in this booth at the moment. I think four probably would have been better. I won't know until I actually go to spray. I think when I redo this to actually do paint and clear coats, I'll probably go with four four filters and four fans. But filters, two, three dollars a piece. You get them real cheap at the Walmart or whatever the hell you want to go and grab them. Uh, they're just standard furnace, fur, furnace filters. Get the cheapo ones, it doesn't matter. Uh, box fans again, Walmart, uh, Meyer, you know, Home Depot, twenty to twenty, twenty to twenty-five dollars for a box fan. That's enough. You can do better. You can get some higher volume fans. It's going to cost you more money, right? Um, so I've got a filter here on the entrance, and I got a filter on the exit. And I have a fan on one side pushing in, and one fan pushing out. Uh, lighting now. Unfortunately, my lighting in my garage sucks and I ordered new lighting. It hasn't shown up yet, um, but I would recommend putting lighting up along your header and getting yourself some good visibility of what you're doing. I'm going to be using mobile, mobile lighting just because I, I don't have my lights yet. I was going to temporarily mount them in the, in the booth. When, uh, when I was done with all this, taking the booth down, I would take those lights and replace my existing lighting that's, that you can see above me here. Um, the only thing that's missing out of this equation what I would have liked to have had was a zip up plastic door, plastic sheeting door. Uh, they, it's basically a tarp with a zipper. Uh, I ordered it about a month ago. It's sitting on some boat in the middle of the ocean somewhere. Don't know any idea when it's going to be getting here, but uh, what I'm going to be doing is I overlapped my plastic sheeting and I'm just going to tape the inside up to seal it up. So. That, that is it's a pain in the butt, but that's what I'm gonna eventually end up doing. A um, little preview for what's gonna come on the next video when I'm actually laying primer on the car is I'm gonna be doing it in a couple different uh, phases. So the car's blown apart. You can't see it, it's in the driveway at the moment. But um, I'm gonna be painting from the firewall back. So I'm gonna drop the subframe out, push it in the driveway, paint just the shell of the car. No doors, no trunk, no, no fenders, nothing just the shell of the car, get my two coats on it, let it cure just a little bit, hook the subframe up, push it back in the driveway. Then I'm gonna be painting the hood, the trunk, the doors, the front fenders, the core support, all those components separately because I need to paint both the inside and outside faces of them, or primer them, inside and outside faces of them. So that'll be a separate process. 
So we'll uh, we'll get to that one in the next video when you see me laying not primer. I probably won't cover all of it. That'll just be redundant. Um, keep your booth sterile, right? Uh, I've already scrubbed the floor. I'm gonna hose it down one more time before I start painting. Um, wipe down your hoses, any electrical cords, anything that you're bringing into the booth, wipe them all down before you bring them in. You'll need a step ladder so that you can paint the roof and stuff like that. Wipe all that stuff down, make sure it's clean. Don't bring anything in that you don't want to get into your paint job. Um, lastly, and you guys may debate me on this, but I, it needs to be said. Do you need to build a booth to do this type of stuff? The answer is no. Is it recommended? Yes. I have, I have painted without booths. Uh, I've worked with professional painters. I mean, custom hot rodders and guys have built custom bikes and guys have done, you know, custom cars and all this stuff, painting in just their garage like this without booths. I've seen, a, I got a, a friend of mine who won national awards. He literally painted his car in his driveway. I feel bad for his neighbors, but he painted his car in his driveway and it was at World of Wheels and won awards and all sorts of different things. You can do this without a booth. I chose to do a booth for, t for a couple of reasons. One, my garage is a nasty mess. It would have been a lot longer to clean my garage, get it, get it sterile to paint in, than it would have been to build a booth. Secondly, there's a lot of crap in my garage that I can't just leave outside while I'm painting. There's, there's just too much shit in here. So I'm choosing to create a booth so it doesn't get all over the stuff in my garage. Three, I'm actually wanting to be nice to my neighbors. I don't want overspray all over my cars or their cars or any of that stuff, so I'm gonna you know, do it in a booth. Do you absolutely need to? Again, no. Should you? I, I think so, which is why I did it. So I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions or comments about any of this stuff, drop them below. Uh, hit like and subscribe if you would. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you to all the new subscribers who joined the channel just recently. I don't know where you came from, but glad you're here. Uh, we'll be seeing you next time very shortly. Get the primer on the car.